so tell us about rag and raga how, why it is not the same as melody which some people think it is yeah uh, the concept of uh, raga the highly rich uh, concept of raga is uh, the identity of indian music both hindustani and uh, carnatic and uh, india has uh, is often considered as the home of the raga system and indian music is called as raga sangeeta it is a pivotal concept of uh, indian music and the ultimate uh, aim of art music in india has been to explore and express the raga in all its grandeur going by uh, if you have to look at what a raga means it's a general word which has many meanings it can mean affection it can mean colors feelings um, attachment you know krishna says in bhagavad gita raga dvesha so in that context it is affection it can also mean color shades feelings and so on so it is uh, derived from the uh, ranj dhatu and uh, it is defined as anything that rejoices the mind this is the general definition ranjayati iti ragah ranjyate anena iti ragah and uh, again going by brahadeshi's uh, definition yosau dhvani visheshastu swaravarna swaravarna vibhushitah ranjako jana chittanam sacha raga udahrutah that dhvani vishesha or that special musical sound uh which is uh, decorated with specific swaras and varnas and which has the ability to delight the minds of the listeners is a raga so this is more or less a general definition a more comprehensive and uh, deeper and practical definition is given uh, can be seen in uh, a text called manasolasa 12th century text written by chalukya someshwara he says raga pravardhate shrutya rajyate manasam sada so we have seen that ragas are derived out of swaras but here he says raga pravardhate shrutya so that is the speciality of the raga system uh, uniqueness of the raga system is that the ragas are created out of swaras but after being born out of the swaras they actually transcend the swaras and they go by shrutis and this this is represented by what is called as gamaka that is another uh, non translatable that i'll be taking up a little later so all these terms are kind of interrelated mm. so if you have to understand what a gamaka is you should know what are the shrutis then you should know raga you should know swaras you should all these you know have to be seen in a totality so that is the definition given by uh, manasolasa if we have to understand the nature of the indian raga uh, it is it's a highly um, abstract concept very intangible um it has to be uh, felt and experienced rather than uh, explained it's it's extremely difficult to explain what a raga is uh, basically it can be uh, said that uh, the combination and arrangement of um uh, a series of swaras in a particular sequence with a definite relationship to the fundamental swara or adhara shrja is a is the basis for ragas uh and this is uh, denoted by what is what we call as the arohana avarohana of the raga hmm. arohana is the movement of the swaras from the lowest to the highest the ascending movement of the swaras avarohana is the descending movement of the swaras so for every raga and this is in the western system this is called as a scale so this the scale or the arohana avarohana is just a basic entry point into the raga is to understand the outline or just the contour of the raga in fact raga is much more than that in the western system it's it ends here they have the major scale they have the minor scale they have the harmonic minor scale melodic minor scale for them scales are the melodies but for us raga is much beyond the scale and that is where it transcends the swaras and goes by the shrutis uh, for an example of an arohana avarohana could be sari ga ma pada ni sa sa ni da ba ma ga ni sa this is maya malava gola raga so this is the basic Uh, if if a student has to be taught what maya malava gola is he will be taught you know these are the swaras that have to be sung in the arohana and these are the swaras that are sung in the avarohana so that is the entry point into the raga but the raga is the picture or the personality of the raga is much beyond that so this aspect of you know our ragas uh, being beyond scales is recognized by the western music world also harvard dictionary of music if i have to quote it says the pitches of any music in which pitch is definable can be reduced to a scale the concept and its pedagogical use have been especially prominent in the history of western art music so the importance of prominence of the concept of scale 
is very uh, is of great importance in western art music however the importance of this concept in non western system varies considerably and is often associated with concepts of melody construction and internal pitch relationships that go well beyond any simple ordering of pitches from lowest to highest so it is explicitly saying in non western musical cultures in other words in indian music ragas are much beyond scales so melody construction and the internal pitch relationships what we call as those subtle shrutis that we use in building a raga in the exquisite workmanship that we use to create a raga you know that is uh, what is important in our system so the the core of the raga the crux of the raga is its melodic uh, personality and individuality which is much beyond its arohana and avarohana and uh, how do we get to this this is defined by what we call as characteristic uh, uh, phrases or signature sangatis that are specific to each raga which have been defined and refined over centuries of evolution for example there is a raga called todi um it is a full scale raga which has sarigama pa danisa sani da pa ma ga ri sa but if i just sing that will will i will i be doing justice to todi no so i'll have to sing the signature sangatis or the characteristic phrases exclusive phrases which are uh, meant to be sung only in that raga to bring out the personality of todi to d- just demonstrate ta na ra la 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 na na ra pa da ni da pa and that is where it goes beyond swaras if i say it has to, it has to stick to swaras it will sound like this padani da pa ma da pa ga ma ma ni ni pa da it will sound like this it will sound so raw and uh, unsophisticated uh, or very crude but the beauty of the raga is padani da pa look at the way the ni is handled so between the da and ni i touch so many subtle shrutis so todi goes by those microtones which are in between two swaras though it's important to understand what are the swaras in todi if i have to go deeper into the raga i have to leave out the swaras and see what comes in between the swaras so it's just like saying the sun rises in the east and sets in the west but what's in between ha huh. but later after you grow up you are taught that uh, the sun stays where it is yeah. it is the earth which is going around the sun so the whole concept changes here again padani da pa ma da pa ga ma so when i from pa to ga i came it's not there it is not allowed as per the avarohana the avarohana says ani da pa ma ga ri sa so i'm skipping the ma there so am i going against the rule of the raga no because arohana avarohana is not the end of the raga i'm going to exhibit the actual personality bring out the actual flavor of todi and how do i know that this phrase has to be sung in todi that has come down through generations that's the process of evolution of the raga system and this is something which is so unique and so exclusive to indian music you cannot find a parallel for this anywhere in the world so and that's the reason indian music is called as uh, raga sangeeta and ragas are like um they're like living things you know all of us have eyes ears hands and legs but we have special features which differentiates each of us so similarly all ragas have swaras the same swara sometimes they have the same swaras two ragas might have the same swaras but their personality is so different they might be similar ragas but they have their own independent characteristic personality some are morning ragas some are evening ragas yes yes some are when it's raining yes some are to give you boost joy yes so tell us about the correlation of ragas with these kind of things yeah which also is something interesting because in western music you don't have this kind of concept. yes yes uh indian music you know the raga system the ragas have been just like nada raga has always been um, uh, you know seen as a means of transcendence and that connect or harmony with nature is always uh, there uh, so different ragas relating to different times of the day different seasons of the year uh you know they are identified and uh, they are uh, set to uh, stimulate specific rasas in our minds so if you sing a monsoon raga that is best suited for that uh, you know period 
that's that season so when you listen to a monsoon raga you feel that oh it's raining outside so and here again there are there are two things you know indian music has uh, um, the, the hindustani music most strictly follows this you know this is called as raga vela paddhati so if you ask a hindustani musician he will not sing an evening raga in a morning concert and he will not sing a monsoon raga in a in a concert that is happening in summer so he will stick to the uh, the time of the day and the time of the year but in carnatic music the um, the outlook is different you want to create an imagery of that particular time of the day or that particular season even when it is hot extremely hot you you will sing an amrita varshini so that you get some kind of a you know cooling effect in your mind you imagine a monsoon you imagine it's raining and ragas have we have had such powers that we have seen great musicians you know who have brought rains you know who have um, you know lit lamps you know with their uh, music you know that if extremely gifted musicians they have the ability to do that so all these things are unimaginable in a, in the western uh, framework and uh, ragas are uh, just like nada it is viewed with a spiritual outlook tyagaraja says ra, ra, uh, raga rasika he describes lord rama as raga rasika one who delights in the raga arunagiri nathar says raga turai one one who dwells in the raga so when they create a particular composition in a particular raga in praise of a particular deity they you know they integrate that whole thing you know they feel the that particular deity is nothing but the embodiment of that raga in which they are composing so that is the kind of uh, um, status that raga has always had in our uh, system and one more thing which i want to mention here is ragas are aesthetic entities which can be uh, perceived only by trained ears so the receptivity of the uh, listener is as important as the skill and the expertise uh, expertise of the performer so the ability on the part of a person to uh, recognize identify uh, differentiate and appreciate ragas indicates a high degree of musical culture so only people with that high level of aesthetic sense can um, um uh, experience those ragas and that's the reason in indian music um a listener comes to listen not just to the music he comes to listen to the musician right so there is that aspect of manodharma creative music which is again exclusive to indian music music which is not rehearsed which is created on the spot so ragas the same raga is improvised many many ways many ways so that's also different that's also different and the so same that, musician yeah. i sing so, a raga today and tomorrow i sing the same raga so, it might sound totally different so it's kind of a meta level structure exactly it's not a fixed composition it's not a fixed so there is a it's like a template it's a template it's an open architecture where you can within that you can play it's an open framework it's a broad framework of course the framework has to be followed this is, it's not that you can go do do so whatever you a, want so there's a raga is a framework a structure yes. an architecture which can be populated by many uh, uh, compositions yes. many that fit this framework yes. so there are all there can be so many improvisations of one particular raga yes there can be so many compositions in that raga plus there can be so many creative uh, so much of creative music happening in that raga right so uh, and ours is the only system which gives ample scope for creativity within the framework of tradition right our tradition is so rich that you can do infinite things within that framework right and uh, just removing the framework and throwing it away is not some, you're not doing something great to the system in fact you're you're damaging the system and uh, you must have a sense of responsibility when you are because you are a part of a tradition it is not as i said earlier it's not just some kind of an art form it is a complex musical culture which has centuries of history behind it it is a traditional genre of music so that uh, reverence to the tradition has to be there but the tradition is not restricting you you know as pollock says shastra restricts you right it it doesn't offer scope for creativity even even he has spoken even about uh, uh, art making in india it, you know it is constrained by high degree of rules is what is i don't know what he uh, <laughs> what kind of uh, uh, lens uh, he adopted to get that well, view when people don't understand then they they come up with reasons for they don't understand their own their own uh, inadequacy exactly exactly so since they don't understand they say this is not okay this is not good enough for uh, this is restricting you and things like that but uh, you have to get into the system be a practitioner of the art learn from a guru 
uh, and you will uh, immerse yourself in that vast raga system that uh, that knows no bounds is uh, what i can say and uh, again coming to manodharma it is one special feature of indian music and manodharma has been possible in indian music only because of this raga system uh, western music or european music is based on what is called as harmony system of harmony our they, they define uh, melody and harmony we'll come to that a little later harmony is uh, you know playing of uh, the same pitches simultaneously right. many of them together many of them together so if you have seen a piano recital you know too many two three or even more keys will be played at the same time so mutually consonant notes will be played at the same time uh, but melody is where the melody is created so since ours is a melodic system um and there is a harmonic system had we followed the harmonic system our manodharma wouldn't have flourished to this uh, you know this level it wouldn't have grown or developed to such uh, such great heights so it is uh, we have to give credit to the raga system uh, for uh, all that we have in uh, indian music it is uh, the unparalleled uh, feature of indian music which is uh, and if you have to understand the raga it has to be as raga only and often it's translated as melody often translated as uh, melody uh, sometimes translated as a uh, mode um, and a very um, uh, non technical definition would be uh, tune and uh, some people say melody type melody mold uh, so how does uh, western music define melody it says a coherent succession of pitches melody is opposed opposed to harmony in referring to successive rather than simultaneous sounds it is opposed to rhythm in referring to pitch rather than duration or stress so this we will be again taking up when we do laya which is translated as rhythm here if you ask them to define melody they will say it is opposed to harmony and rhythm if you ask them to uh, define harmony they will say it is opposed to melody and rhythm and rhythm is opposed to melody and harmony but in indian music it's an integrated whole uh, we cannot say that there is no aspect of harmony at all when we have instrumental music two three instruments playing to together we have the um, uh, adoption of harmonic system also but more so melody so this is the definition of melody that is given so from this it is clear that it is a series of single tones that's produced one after the other as defined by uh, harvard dictionary uh, as defined in the western uh, tradition is raga just that raga is much more it has a personality it has its flavor and it has a, it's it's a beautiful system so ra calling raga as a melody uh, you know sounds very primitive according to me and it sounds very very basic it doesn't come anywhere close to our grand concept of uh, the raga and it cannot be called as a tune or a scale because raga is as i said raga is more than a scale so none of these terms do any justice to the grand concept of uh, raga and if one has to understand um, comprehend and appreciate a raga it has to be as raga only so even a westerner if he has to understand indian music he has to look at it as raga sangeeta so the special feature of indian music keeping that in mind he has to study or appreciate indian music very good generally we see if you go go through the harvard dictionary of music we come across the term non western musical culture but there are, there are some places where it says indian music and indian raga is is a place you know is, is something which is recognized and that can be seen in a particular place it says all music cultures have melody and melodies and within bounds of larger stylistic consistencies a culture's melodies resemble and different from one another in ways easily perceivable if not always so easily describable yet the consideration of melodies in relatable groups is the quickest path to grasping their individual modes of coherence in some musics melody types are named and are describable entities manipulated by musicians the indian raga is the outstanding modern instance so it recognizes the greatness of the concept of indian raga but uh, it is rather strange why it says modern instance because indian raga uh, system has a history of not less than 2 millennia a uh, white says modern instance is not known but it at least recognizes the fact that in india in indian music raga is the ultimate thing